25 years ago, a bunch of fed up but popular comic book artists said hell no to the big two publication companies, left and founded their own company, Image Comics, based on the foundation of creator-owned material, creator-owned rights to their material, and freedom for artists, creators, editors, and a publishing company. Those morales still stand to this day, and in Comic Book Mustache, breaking news this morning, Image Expo 2015 reminds us why Image Comics is not only a game changer, but the best publication company in the medium of comic books today. Let's check out some of the announcements from Image Expo in this breaking news segment of The Comic Book Mustache. Let's take a trip back through memory lane, ladies and gentlemen. Tom McFarlane's Spider-Man sold millions and millions of copies. Jim Lee was announced as the artist for an X-Men renumbering at number one with writer Chris, Chris Claremont. It sold millions and millions of copies. Rob Liefeld's X-Force was selling millions and millions of copies. Artists like Mark Silvestri and Eric... Um, Eric Larson were up-and-comers selling hundreds and hundreds of thousands of single issues. They were not making the money they deserved. They were not getting credit for the creations that they created. They were not making a dime off these things other than their average pay rate. And they said, fuck this. They started their own company based on creative freedom for artists and writers, as well as the ability to own the products that they create. Flash forward 20 years later, Robert Kirkman, a working man for Marvel Comics, created a little tiny comic book called The Walking Dead. Starts selling a little bit more. Starts selling a little bit more. AMC picks it up for a TV pilot. TV pilot airs. It's the most popular show on TV. If this was created for Marvel or DC, this man would not be making a dime, but because he published it through Image, he owns all of the rights and is making all of the money. This is absolute freedom for creators. They're allowed to do what they want without editorial interference, and they can bank off their creations. This is the ultimate freedom, the ultimate ability to do what you want in the creative process. You will not have any interference from Guys in suits telling you what to do. I'm wearing a suit. I'm sorry. I got to go to work. I look like a mess. Um, okay. Flash forward five years later. The year, 2015. It's January. A mustache is getting settled to go to sleep next to his beautiful wife and his loving but very annoying kitten. And he's getting bombarded on his cell phone with news from a comic book convention that he had been looking forward to. Image Expo 2014. It happened last night. I woke up this morning to even more amazing news. We have a ton of stuff to look forward to in the game of creator-owned comic book um, publications. And um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Image Comics, it's my favorite. I think we are living in a golden age in comic books because the output coming from uh, the creator-owned genre is unreal. Every week I feel like there's a new number one that I'm throwing down my $2.99, my $3.50, my $3.99, and it's absolutely worth it. We are seeing artists, writers, and creators transitioning from the big two, making their names there, and moving to Image Comics exclusively. Matt Fraction, uh, Marvel's about to lose him. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, DC and Marvel, I think they lost him. Robert Kirkman is gone. This is the way it works. Make your name at the big two. You know, you have the ability to sell for yourself, create a name for yourself, and move on. And you're able to do whatever you want. And us as comic book readers should be rejoicing. Because this is some of the best, most brilliant stuff. Not only in comic books, but in any form of media. Um... Stuff like Saga, stuff like Sex Criminals, stuff like Pretty Deadly. No one can get away with that in 
um, films, and if it was written as a novel, we wouldn't be able to get the um, artistic illustrations exactly perfect uh, in the terms of the way the creators intended these things to look and the pace and everything. It is very unique to comic books, and it's one of the reasons comic books is the best um, creative medium for artists as far as um, getting their output done perfectly as intended as a creator. So, yesterday, Image Expo opened up with its um, now very um, famously noted keynote speech from um, editor Eric Stevenson. I gotta keep this energy up, man. Oh! Um, Eric Stevenson also wrote a book that I reviewed. Go back to next week, uh, last week. Go through Don. Go back to last week on my uh, feed and check out They're Not Like Us. Number one, it was written by Eric Stevenson. He writes another great book called Nowhere Men, which never gets published anymore for uh, personal reasons from him and the artist. Stevenson said it before in his speeches, watch out Marvel, watch out DC, they're coming for your creators. It's no longer just a big two. As far as they're concerned, it's a big three. And we're watching artists and writers transition away from the big two for the promise of creative freedom. A promise that was established 25 years ago and is still instated today. And we see that with the first guest, Mr. Todd McFarlane, making his name at Marvel with Spider-Man and founder of Image Comics with their splash hit Spawn. Something that is very, very dated if you try and read it today. It really is the 90s all wrapped up into one pretty muscular. Lots of pouches and pockets and machine guns and tits and boobs and gore package. But Spawn has still been continuing and with number 250 McFarland promised us three or four issues for the price of two, says it's going to be a big, huge splash issue. He's going to be working on a new film script, taking his time away from comics, probably still working on his toys, because money, money. Um, and we are going to see a relaunch of the series with Spawn Resurrection number one from one of this amigo's favorite writers, Paul Jenkins. You've heard that the Inhumans are coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Please check out Paul Jenkins and Jay Lee's uh, Marvel Knight series in humans. I had just reread it using the Marvel Unlimited app. That's a subscription service. It's available for $9.99 and you get over 16,000 comic books for the price of $10 a month from Marvel Comics Publication. Um, Paul Jenkins, that's very exciting. I think he can do a great job with this series. I'd be interested to see if Spawn could still hold relevance today. It was a huge comic book when I was a little kid. Um, it was a phenomenon. Uh, the HBO series was great, the movie not so much, but um, <clears throat> as dated as it is now, um, it's a landmark for the industry, and I'm excited to see what Paul Jenkins can do. I forgot the name of the artist, and I apologize. Up next, one of this Amigos favorites, James Robinson. Check this out. James Robinson did a series for DC Comics called Starman uh, about 10, 15 years ago, where he took the Golden Age character of Starman and uh, made it his son, Jack Knight, artist Tony Harris. It feels like a creator-owned series, it has beautiful artwork, and it is one of this Amigo's favorite comic book series of all time. This is a little action figure that my little sister Margo, I love you Margo, got me for Christmas. Uh, I love Starman, I love James Robinson, I think he's doing a great job at Marvel right now uh, with Fantastic Four, as the Fantastic Four is getting canceled for some stupid fucking reason nobody knows. Uh, maybe because only this mustache has been buying it for the past 10 years. Pick up Fantastic Four, they're important. Um, as uh, that series is getting canceled and Robinson says his farewell to DC and Marvel, he has been doing Saviors, uh, which is a really fun series, though it has a sporadic release date with Image Comics. And uh, he's doing a really weird series called Airboy, uh, flashback to the Golden Age, supposed to be psychedelic and drug-induced, sounds like fun, sounds really weird. Plus a new sci-fi book, which was teased last night, called Heaven with uh, Philip Tan. I was singing Heaven in the tune to In Heaven from my uh, favorite film, Eraserhead. Brian Wood uh, working on Marvel's um, Moon Knight after Warren Ellis left. Also, uh, that really good Star Wars book from 
Dark Horse before uh, Star Wars got bought over from Marvel. Brian Wood has a new series uh, where celebrity chefs rule the world. It's called Starve, plus a Viking book called um, Black Road. I'm trying to remember all these things. I have a couple scribbly notes uh, behind the camera. So, some stuff to look out for with uh, Brian Wood. Emma Rios, we are, um, she's a wonderful fucking artist, a cool lady. Um, we're getting pretty deadly. Season 2 from writer Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, Kelly Sue writes for Marvel with Captain Marvel, but she is another one who's transitioning over with her husband, Matt Fraction. Lucky dog gets to bang that guy every once in a while. Um, She's moving over to Image. We saw Bitch Planet number one. I did a review of that. If you look back in my feed, see how I like Bitch Planet. But she has another book. Uh, season one was released uh, throughout the past two years. It's a wonderful, weird, um, poetic western called Pretty Deadly with artist Emma Rios. Uh, season two will be coming. I'm losing my bearings here. Forgive me. Um, and also, Emma Rios has a really interesting looking uh, new series called Mirror, which was announced last night. Here's some big news for me. I'm a big fan of uh, writer-artist Jeff Lemire. Underwater Welder actually made me cry. I was in a closet at work um, at a hospital trying to escape the day-to-day -day grind, and I had it in my pocket. I picked it out, and I started bawling, and a friend saw me uh, tearing up in a closet and thought it was really weird, and I had to tell him it's because I was reading a comic book by a wonderful Canadian writer and artist called Jeff Lemire. He has a new series coming out called uh, Plutonia. It's like Stand By Me with Superheroes, where a group of Canadian teens stumbles across a dead superhero in the woods. Lemire has another project that was announced yesterday. It's probably going to be the biggest release Image Comics has. Writer, superstar, Scott Schneider, DC Comics, Batman, as well as Witches, is doing a book with his Canadian pal, Jeff Lemire, called AD, which stands for After Death. Next... From Brian K. Vaughn, BKV, we get a new series, um, writer of Saga, Why the Last Man, some of the biggest books in comics and examples of why creator-owned series will be victorious. Uh, we Stand Guard is the name of his new series. It's got art by Steve, hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Scross. Uh, it's Canada versus the U.S. with gigantic robots, U.S., um, Invades Canada and the Canadian uh, Defending Forces, something weird, beautiful cover, and uh, there's a preview on um, a couple websites right now. I did a uh, Best of 2014, and my favorite new series of 2014 was Wicked and the Divine, which is a series from Image Comics from the artist-writer team, Kieran Gillen and Jamie McKelvey. The team had done a book for Image years ago called Phonograph. I love this series. If you're into music, if you're into uh, current day pop culture, if you live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, it is a series for you. And they're coming back with the second part to Phonogram. Um, it's called The Immaterial Girl. And Kieran Gillen also announced a new series with an artist who I can't remember the name of, but it's going to be called The Ludocrats, a fantastical adventure beyond space, time, and uh, mortal comprehension. Really cool stuff. Chip Zdarsky, uh, if you watch my best of video, my favorite ongoing series was uh, from artist Chip Zdarsky, Sex Criminals. Uh, Zdarsky and um, uh, Matt Fraction, Sex Criminals, is uh, another creator-owned series that is just so gorgeous, so beautiful, and I haven't laughed so hard reading a comic book ever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Um, he's got a new series that he'll be drawing um, called Captera. Um, and it had a tagline, Space, Why You Gotta Be Like That, which got me really excited because it shows that it's got the uh, levity and humor um, that we've come to know from Chip Zdarsky. Scotty Young, the guy who drew all those Marvel Babies covers and um, writer of uh, Marvel's uh, Tales from Oz, a really cool adaptation of Frank Baum's work. Uh, he announced that he'll be doing something called I Hate Fairyland, and it's got a picture of a little fairy on top of a uh, landscape that looks like Oz with a giant bloody uh, hammer or axe thing. Um, looks like Scotty Young is beginning to become self-aware and poking fun at himself. I'm really looking forward to that. He's still working with Marvel, doing Rocket Raccoon, a really fun series, picking up steam from the Guardians of the Galaxy film that we all loved that came out this summer. 
Uh, Brian K. Vaughn also announced that he'll be doing a new book. This is um, the big one. I'm saving it for last. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn is uh, teaming up with artist Cliff Chang. We all came to love him uh, from him and Brian Azzarello's Wonder Woman run, which launched the new 52's new number one reboot of Wonder Woman and sadly came to an end to be replaced by some uh, big two editorial garbage. Um, but Cliff Chang is back. And uh, it's where he belongs in the creator own field. He's a fucking amazing artist, really cool art style. And Brian K. Vaughn is one of the best. He's got a book called Paper Girls uh, that'll be coming out. Uh, it's about four paper girls the night after Halloween. One night, lots of weird stuff happens. Um, I know I um, said that was last. I actually saved the best best for last, um, but it's early. I'm drinking my coffee. It's 8 o'clock right now, and it's snowing outside. The best best I say for last is a new pulp noir -y kind of series, at least that's what I think, from one of my favorite artists. Um, he's been doing incredible work, uh, his output has been unreal for a very long time, and it's nice to see a guy this big, this good, transition over to um, Image Comics. It's kind of like if Alex Ross came over and said, hey, I'm going to do something creator-owned. Uh, Darwin Cook will be doing a series for Image Comics, ladies and gentlemen. It's called uh, Revengeance. It's got a weird name. Vengeance and Revenge put together into one beautiful package. It's a noir story. It's going to be a three-part miniseries starting in 2015. The year of our Lord. The year of this mustache. Uh, the year of Image Comics, from what it sounds like. Uh, if you're interested in some of these, check out uh, Humble, Bum Humble Bumble. Humble Bumble. It's a fun word to say, but Humble Bundle uh, releases things for a very, very name your own price kind of thing, but for like 15 bucks you can get everything. They have a uh, Image Expo preview. Highlights include um, Savior, uh, Injection, Star, Free Deadly, Warren Ellis has a new series that's coming out, um, the Brian K. Wood, uh, Brian, Brian K. Wood, the Brian Wood, the Brian K. Vaughn, all those series. You can see a couple page previews and the arts, uh, the art from those. If you go to Humble Bundle, HumbleBundle.com and uh, check out, I think it's called the Humble Indie Bundle. Um, check that out and uh, don't forget, comment below uh, with some of the stuff uh, that you're excited about from Image Comics. I missed a lot of it, but there was a lot of it. If you're interested in checking out comics by the amazing publication company, Image Comics, find a comic shop near you. Go to comicshoplocator.com. Type in your zip code and you can find a comic shop closest. And if you can't, download your comics digitally. I use the Comixology app. It's available for both iOS and Android marketplaces. Or check out your local library. I just picked up a couple image series that I had been missed. Missed, missed, missed missing uh, from my pull list weekly, and uh, I'm able to catch up for free from my library. Until next time, folks, he's a modern-day warrior with a mean, mean stride. This comic book mustache is a mean, mean guy. Down, 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 down.